Hey, Rick here again, and in today's video we're going to talk about setting up a project in Accelerator RTAC. So the last video we gave a real brief overview of kind of how the RTAC software works, and today I want to give a hands-on demonstration of how easy it is to set up a small project with a few devices. And so um, I've already opened the project up like we talked about in the last video, and I've actually named this one 52nd Street Substation. And so what we're going to do is click on the Insert menu, and as a side note, you can also right-click anywhere here in the device tree and add devices. You can see here. But I'm going to click on this Insert ribbon. So I click on the Insert ribbon, select SEL because that's the kind of device I want to add, and it has all of the SEL devices that SEL sells. And I'm going to go down to 351S, select the protocol, and you can see all the protocols that are available for that device. And I want to select SEL protocol. Um, I can change the name if I want. I can select if it's serial or Ethernet, and then click Insert. And the really cool thing about the SEL protocol on the RTAC is that all of the tags that may be available for that device are listed here. So I can click on the Meter tab, and you can see all of the device tags are listed here. Uh, the Settings tab is the settings for the communication. So um, you can see it's communication port 1, uh, 19200, and I'm just going to leave those parameters there. So I'm going to click on the meter tab, and I'm going to select some uh, bits and some analog values that I can bring back from that meter. So I'm going to just do Control F for find, type in 52. I'm going to get the 52 remote bit, and there he is. So just double click on this false to change it to true, and you notice all of them are disabled by default. That's because you don't want to get all of the tags all the time. So you just uh, change the enable field to true, and that will enable it. Um, let's grab some more. So I will grab just some random tags for this project. So here's some TLEDs. I'll change those to true. And then let's go to the bottom and get some analog values. So here's frequency. We'll grab frequency. Current for phase C. B. In A, and you could grab any of them. Um, now, Control S is save. It saves it. And when I click on this Tags tab, it'll show me all of the tags that I've configured on one of these tabs. So there they are. If I had some remote bits or breaker bits that I had enabled, they would show up here as well. Now, I want to have three 351Ss that are exactly the same. So I click on this guy, and I can right click and say Copy. I'll do control V to paste, and there it is. And I can add as many as I want through this here, but I just want to add one more. And I'm going to change the name here as well. So 351S2, and this is 351S3. And then hit paste. And what this is going to do is make exact duplicates of that one that I copied. It's going to have all of the same tags. It's going to have all of the same communication parameters, except the really cool thing is that it will automatically increment the COM port. So here you have COM port 3 for device 3. Uh, device 2 has COM port 2. And click on Tags, and you can see all of those same tags are enabled. So now, if I loaded this in the RTAC, the RTAC would automatically start pulling three SEL 351Ss on COM port 1, 2, and 3. Now what we want to do is get that data over to SCADA. So I'm going to click on Other because it's not an SEL device. And you can see all the protocols that are supported there. DNP protocol is the one I want. I'm going to change the name of this guy to SCADA. And I want to use a server. It's going to be an Ethernet server. And that means it's going to be serving the data to the SCADA. Click on Insert. And I'm going to leave these parameters as the default. Uh, obviously, you would change them to match your IP address. You notice there's no tabs there for data, so I'm going to click on this Tags list, and this allows me to create a DNP server shared map. And that shared map I can use just for this server, or I can use it for multiple servers, and it, then they would all share the same map, so I don't have to remap a bunch of things. So I click on that. I'm going to leave the name as the default. I can change it if I want. Click on Insert, and I'm going to add some binary input points. And these are the points that are going to be going to SCADA. So I'll add 12 of those. We have some analogs. And I don't recall how many I put in there, so I'm just going to put 12. And then we have our 
tags for our SCADA system and we need to link this map now to our SCADA server. So I click on this and you can see it will give me a list of all of the available maps. I just have one. So I'll select that, save it all, and I don't get any errors. The errors would show up here at the bottom. And now all I have to do is map them. So I'll click on the shared map, grab all of the binary inputs, control C to copy, go to my tag processor. Now the tag processor is the place that um, gives me the ability to map all of the sources or all of the things coming into the RTAC to the destination. For example, a SCADA system. So control V to paste it and there's all the server tags right there. And now we want to put sources here for those. So I click on my 351S. I'm going to grab my binary inputs, copy them, go to the tag processor, paste. For this video we just want to know that it's, it's a, a very simple way to map data from devices to SCADA. We go back to here and we grab the last binary inputs and we map them to the binary inputs to SCADA. So now all of the tags that are on this side of the table will be mapped over to the SCADA tags and all of the timestamps and quality and everything associated with those are mapped over here. And you can do the same thing for the analogs and the controls, and, and we'll cover those in detail in a later video. And it's really as simple as that. Just a few clicks, a few copy and pastes, and you're done. So thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, feel free to call us here at SEO. And I encourage you to watch the other videos. Thanks.